The experience itself is never incorrect, but it is, however, always itself beyond direct explanation through words. You can say meaning is arbitrary in the usage it is being given by what is the meaning of life. So the problem isn't that the answer hasn't been solved. It's like asking what is jiggly squat. The answer is arbitrary because I made up the word. There's no point in using a word for which no definition has been given. It's all arbitrary how I use these words. Why has nothing to do with it, and that's something the mind can't understand. So don't try to, just want to, because feeling is effortless. Trying gets in the way. You can't go away from something without having something also you're going towards. In other words, freedom is relativistic and not ultimate. Death is the unknown, neither here nor there. You must have a reason, they say. You must have a purpose. If you don't, you're open to evil and bad. Is that verifiable? The answer is no. All such assertions rely on presuppositions on notions of truth, basing on judgment for anterior, a posteriori. It's hard to swallow, almost impossible. Yeah, anything is possible, but that doesn't tell us what exactly. What we know can only ever be right in front of us. Everything else is speculation, belief-based, hocus-pocus, for the context is the context. And when the unknown becomes known, it is just another part of that. What's here and now is forever, indescribable by the mind directly, only explainable when silence allows. It's all hard. Patience, pushing, presence, dodging, etc. They all require some pain. And in this pain, is there anything at all to learn? Besides, don't do that again. And if life is primarily, essentially pain or pleasure, over and over, why would anyone want to create it unless they are assuming some hopeful, vague, ambiguous instance somewhere else? To speculate about the beyond can be fun and engaging, but it's not necessarily practical. What we cannot know, we cannot know, and once we know, it's a part of the context. So it would be satisfying for me to see people admit that their religion is really just a massive coping mechanism, but perhaps that avenue of dialogue would be much too offensively generating. So I'll say nothing. However, this space is open and broad because I want absolute freedom to say whatever, and if that is not agreeable, fine. But I will not censor myself, thank you. Nothing is really ever lost or gained. It's all transmutation of energies throughout pain to relief and the illusion of good. Nothing is really ever free. There's always a price. When we've gotten observed the cycle, it shall come to an end. What was all that for? Apparently nothing. Not duh. No reason. Just cause. No matter which way you go, it doesn't matter, since it's all just transferring. And by way, I mean modality, ego, or want, compelling feeling or appetite. What do you mean? They are all ways to accomplish the same thing, albeit incidental and intentional. Get from point A to point B, repulsive, force to attractive over and over. The ego is too busy to see anything else than friend or foe. They will also try and make an enemy orally out of ya if they don't understand your ambivalence. Where does it come from? Years of painful observance. I have seen that everything which is to be fought for creates thusly the same tension and the opposing force. It's a cyclical loop to loop, and I want no part, though I can't say I'm free entirely. No, we won't be, not until death. They will come on their own. I just want to move on. We all do, but patience is required. I wish none of life on anyone, because it's a place for the stuck. Ah. It's all in the words, the narrative. What you think, what you believe, is emotionally conditioned and circumstantial. We are not who we think we are, but we're more than these words can describe. Honesty won't save you, neither will loyalty. Not that they're necessarily mutually exclusive, but because pain is. You sit long enough, you'll have to move or die to feel relief. Unpleasantness is the base natural state asterisk. This in itself is repulsive to hear emotionally, but we want to hear because it resonates so strongly. 
We can want to hear repulsive things if it helps us feel closer, more grounded and connected. That's the psychological trade-off. Take an apple for a stone. Conversely, to harness emotional security, the human must gain belief and confidence within themselves. That's what we gravitate towards understanding when we're not caught up in the mind eye's ego's shenanigans. Asterisk. How I know this is through my own experience. And since I have no other context from which to draw, I am knowing all I can within the one. There is no way to verify another's context mentally other than through taking for granted their truth. So don't feel each other's presence and know or don't. You cannot prove or disprove realness because by definition, independence of observation is beyond our context to know since who we are is present tense relative to the indescribable moment supraliminal to the mind. There is absolutely nothing wrong about your experience. It's an experience. It can't be incorrect. However, when it comes to quality of being, ask yourself this. Are you enjoying the outcome of your decisions or not? If not, change the behavior or don't. Flows and time causes and effects. What does a thought mean? As for experience, it can only ever be directly explained by itself, through itself. A thought explaining a thought could never bring understanding. So when we are conscious and thinking about consciousness, we are experiencing what is only within the realm of this context's ability to comprehend. In other words, thoughts and perception must co-mingle to be understood, and vice versa. Non-consciousness is outside the context, therefore cannot interact or engage meaningfully with us. I am using logical paradigms to explain this, but they are also only explainable by themselves, innately, beyond belief, and so on and so forth and whatnot, forever and ever. Today I will play the devil's advocate. I shall further preface this by saying I don't like life and think it's cyclical, mostly painful and awful, if I'm going to cast any judgment about it. However, I can be thoroughly honest with my logical, intuitive understanding to know that my pessimistic bias is just that, neither here nor there sanely as an optimistic one. So, without further ado, when it comes to deconstructionism, deductive reasoning, and taking apart an argument, what you have to do is the structural premises underlying any of it. With most ethical philosophies, there usually is a posterior judgment and or faith in value, repulsive or attractive in force. And there is nothing wrong with this belief, however. It is crucial to admit this honestly, to see clearly that for what it is. So, with antinatalism in particular, the judgment, typically, is that suffering, birth and life is bad. In the case of suffering, calling it bad doesn't really define the experience any further asterisk. And this is where I get into the metaphysics and metacognition of everything. For instance, you cannot asterisk directly. Asterisk describe consciousness with a word, other than through presupposition of function. The experience is nebulous, ambiguous. To any asterisk, direct asterisk, explanation words can offer, other than as placeholders, which makes them almost useless from schema, mind-eye agendas. So all of this is to briefly say that any argument is almost entirely the ego playing games, to assert itself and feel ten of distant from what it deems as worthy or unworthy. Yes, to understand thinking you have to know how we think. Narratives and prerogatives are largely about separation of self from the present moment as a survival, mating, and legacy, installation of heritage and culture, or long periods of generations, tool. Logic in itself is a pattern, recognition device, so that it can accurately predict what's next, which can be paramount in a dire situation. If you see where I'm going with this, that pleases me. And what I'm going to say next is, there is absolutely every reason to remain open with your argument because only the strongest will outlast this examination process and if none do then you don't have to worry about them anyways thank you for reading i will make a note here that i am capable of arguing for anti-natalist agendas by saying every practical instance of pleasure is derived from pain this cyclical conscious physics doesn't appear to ever lead anywhere that being known that creation and destruction are inherently aggressive acts via ego, one has no desire to do them. So, 
If you're doing simply what you want, then procreation and massacre generally won't be a part of that. There may be slight exceptions when euthanasia is a less painful outcome than suffering and dying naturally. But that is where it ends, as far as I am aware. You have two different ways of doing anything when it comes to push and pull, egoic force acting out of emotions, and the guttural, visceral, organic flow of effortlessness, non-emotional reaction, a want. My hunch is that you can get to the same position either way, except the experience will vary. In superficial qualia, fundamentally, nothing is quite substantially different. These forces both operate on repulsion to attraction. Since pain asterisk is asterisk intrinsically repulsive, emotions and somatic qualia vary no differently, ultimately. This life is pain to pleasure and vice versa. The attractive force is necessitated by the repulsive one. This dichotomy works in both the emotional and gut realms. The body is of one. The mind is a provoker of longing. This can wane and bob from one another. Now, someone might become more egoic as if their psychological state is in greater need of repairing and towards their body. If that is, but not necessarily, it's which way we swing. Also dependent on what our training is. If we grew up traumatized, we're exposed to these fight, flight, fawn, freeze, behavioral responses, then inevitably that will be our fundamental psychic outcome. The values and themes are superficial. These base traits aren't. But on the other hand, if we grew up surrounded by accepting, honest, and open human beings, then we can guess we will turn out the same. Unless some greater force comes along for any of these two states, pushing us another way. Uh, uh. And ultimately, which way you go, it's all cyclical in nature. This is why I advocate no reproduction, legacy, or belief. I don't want to see pain. No one does. It's only the ego that will put us here deliberately, as far as I know. I am open to different views, so long as the discussion is open. I don't have an agenda, but I do have a desire to see less suffering. So I will work towards that, in general, holistically, indefinitely. Till there is no more. <laughs>